Uh, hey guys, it's uh, Key here from Kegland. Uh, yeah, the main reason we're doing this video is just because I want to talk through the new pH meters that we've uh, started to make. Um, now, we didn't really want to go out and have to start making our own pH meters, to be honest with you, but um, the reality is we went out there looking for a decent pH meter and we just couldn't find one which had all the features which we thought were necessary for brewers and winemakers and stuff like that uh, and didn't have a really prohibitive price tag. So we felt like there was really a, some scope for us to come in and make a really good pH meter to have all these features we were after, um, but then also, um, yeah, didn't break the bank at the same time. Okay, so the pH meter comes in a nice little polypropylene box. Uh, you've got your batteries inside and also um, your three buffer solutions because this particular type of uh, pH meter has a three point calibration. Um, also, you'll find the way that the, uh, uh, the, uh, the pH meter has been built, it's got an IP67 rating, which is it's, it's fairly water resistant, so you can splash water all over and it shouldn't be a problem. So that's a fairly important thing for a brewer, I think. Um, also, um, yeah, the, uh, we wanted to make sure it had ATC. Um, so that means the probes, uh, not just, they don't just need to measure pH, but also they need to have a very small little temperature probe on there. So you can, if you look sort of closely, you've got the actual pH probe, but then also beside that, you've got a temperature probe. And um, yeah, the reason for that is a lot of guys brewing, obviously they're gonna be, um, you know, they're gonna be measuring hot wort in particular. Uh, or they don't have the patience to let it cool down to room temperature. And if, if you don't have ATC, you're gonna get a very poor accuracy reading and um, you know that's gonna be a bit of a problem for you. Um, the other thing is we wanted to make sure that we were, were coming up with a pH meter which had um, a reasonable resolution on it. So this goes to 0 0.01 pH, so it's fairly accurate, I guess. Uh, we wanted the auto, uh, the, 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 battery, the, the screen to automatically turn off after you leave it for a certain period of time so you don't just uh, burn up all your batteries. Um, and one of the really important things I think with this is we want to make sure that we've got a replaceable probe here and I'll explain to you why. Okay, so inside the probes, you've actually got this sort of bulb and pretty much all the pH meters are designed in the same way. Um, yeah, you've got this bulb on the end and it's a very, very fine glass membrane. And the membrane, it's so fine and so, so thin that it actually has to be permeable. Uh, otherwise, you actually wouldn't be able to get a reading. So it has to be permeable. Um, now with this very, very fine, um, uh, uh, fine glass uh, uh, media here, um, you've got to try to keep this solution in here. So in our particular probes, you have a KCL uh, solution inside here. But the problem is if we just let this probe dry out, the concentration of the KCL in the probe is going to change and you eventually get, you know, uh, you know, your solution starting to evaporate into the atmosphere and, you know, your probe will cease to work. So, um, yeah, it's really important. And the other thing is when you, when, you, when you actually use the probe under really tough conditions, like sticking it into boiling hot wort, for instance, that can really put a lot of pressure on the probes um, and cause them to get damaged very, very quickly. Uh, and for those types of reasons, we want to make sure we had a, um, a, a pH meter where you had a replaceable probes and you had somewhere to go and stock which stocks and is able to supply you those replacement probes. So that's one of the really important things we had, uh, important specifications, I guess, because you don't really want to buy a, a good pH meter and then, you know, you will eventually stuff the probe. Uh, almost certainly that'll happen. It's just a matter of time and then not be able to buy the replacement probes for it, which is a bit of a pain in the, pain in the backside. And even some of the relatively, you know, highly priced ones, they didn't even have replaceable probes and that was a specification we really wanted to make sure we included. Um, so yeah, with this pH meter, replacing the probes is a fairly, fairly straightforward process. Um, the hardest thing is making sure you get the electrodes straight, but I just thought I might quickly show you how this is done. So the first thing is you want to remove this uh, O-ring um, like that. Um, and then you undo this coupling here. As you can see, this O-ring's pretty much uh, throughout the assembly because, uh, you know, it's got the IP67 rating. Uh, so you take that off and then you end up pulling this. Now you've got to be a, bit, a little bit delicate at this because you've got some very small electrodes in here. So you pull that off and then you can see the electrodes. So you can see the electrodes in there. There, um, There's six little electrodes on that side and then you've got the your female side on the actual probe end. So when you want to replace the new one, um, you just get this. You'll, you'll notice that this uh, slot in here, sorry, on this side here, it just lines up with uh, another sort of male slot on that side. 
um, and then you just want to gently put it in. You've got to make sure they're fairly well lined up because you don't want to bend those probes, but it's pretty easy once you've sort of done this a couple of times. And you just push that in like so, and then get this on, put that on top again. And then, yeah, just replace this, uh, this O-ring back on, on top of the probe like so. So it's really, really easy to replace the probe. The other thing is you wanna make sure you do your best to keep the probe in really, really good condition. And in order to do that, you really wanna keep the probe moist. So if you go into a lot of laboratories and stuff like that, they'll often have the, uh, the, the pH meters stored just in a cup or a glass of solution, sometimes like a coffee cup or a, or a beer, car, beer glass or something like that. And you really wanna store it in the solution uh, which is the same type of solution that you've got inside the probe. So as once again, we use the KCL solution. So ideally you'd wanna have this stored in KCL solution, but clearly it's a bit of a pain to have your, you know, your pH meter sitting in a cup just on the bench um, cause it takes up bench space and you may only use this say once a month or something like that, or not, not even once a month potentially. So um, that's kind of really annoying that a lot of pH meters that you find out there on the market um, you have to do that because they don't have a watertight cap. So that was another specification we really, really wanted to make sure we had. So if you look at all our probes, they come with a, uh, a watertight cap and that's exactly why there's that O-ring uh, on, uh, on this probe as well. So you can put, you can fill uh, a little bit of uh, KCL solution inside the cap. Uh, so that way you're storing that in a 100% humid environment and you're storing it in, a, in the same solution which is inside the, uh, in the, inside the probe itself. Okay, now I thought I'd just quickly show you how to do the uh, do the calibration on the units. Uh, it's uh, as I was saying earlier, it's definitely a good idea to make sure you calibrate the unit in the range of pH uh, where you're going to be doing the testing. So, uh, for instance, let's say uh, I don't know, I've got three of these packets here. I've got the uh, pH four, so this is the acid. Uh, acid level on the pH scale. So if I'm gonna uh, you know, measure something with a pH which is a little bit acid, then I'd probably use this uh, pH four buffer solution. Um, I'd highly recommend you guys to get like a glass jar uh, a clean glass jar, but I've just got a clean mug that I just grabbed out of the kitchen. You can pour the buffer solution into this cup or into your glass jar. Uh, make sure it's fully dissolved, the powder in the buffer solution. And then it's really straightforward. Basically just get the uh, pH meter, uh, put it in here. You don't have, you do want to have the temperature, you know, close to room temperature, I guess, but this type of um, uh, pH meter has ATC. So it has a little temperature probe on the end. So um, yeah, it will automatically calibrate out the, um, uh, the, the pH difference if the temperature is slightly off or not quite 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we're just going to stir this around. Once we've got a stable reading on the display here, um, we just have to hold down the calibration button. Um, so that's this button uh, right here. So we just hold down the calibration button for three seconds. Um, and then it says Cal on the screen. Then we just let it do its thing. It automatically knows that we're using the pH for buffer solution. So there's no need to even select anything. It's really, really straightforward. And there you go. Within a few seconds, it's already said end and it's, it's completed the calibration process. So that's it. If you take what we're saying uh, into action, I'm sure your probes will last a long time. You'll get a lot of great use out of these pH meters. Definitely, we think they're uh, one of the best value pH meters in the market. Uh, they're really quality built. We supply um, storage solution and also replacement probes. So um, yeah, I think uh, you guys out there should be really happy once you, uh, once you get one of these, if you do choose to get a digital pH meter.